Hey everyone, welcome back to Genai Vlog on the topic of Transformers tutorial. So in this part two tutorial, recall previously, we have this code here, very simple for you to train your own transform model completely from scratch. We use a sample data that's coming from a NumPy package that's just random integers. So in this episode, we're gonna dive into the sample data and we're gonna discuss what this data look like and how do we create a similar data not from random number generator, but from a real question answer pair. So let's go to the readme file. As you can see here, I have a sample code written out. So let's grab that code and then let's come back to your notebook. So in this notebook, realize that first thing we need is some sort of question answer pair. We're talking about chatbot, right? We're talking about a sentence to sentence model, meaning that there's a sentence going in, there's a sentence coming out. So the questions, you can kind of think about it as the input of the model. And then the answer, you can think about it as the output of the model. So in other words, you can think of this as your X, you throw that X in your model, and then it's gonna give you some sort of Y. It's as simple as that. So with that being said, that is the start. That is how the data needs to look like. And it needs to be a question answer pair that's in somewhat human sensible format. For example, what is the capital of France? And then the answer goes, the capital of France is Paris. Now, of course, this is not the only way to answer the question, right? In a normal day-to-day -day life, if you just ask me, what's the capital of France? Maybe I'm just gonna say Paris as one word, right? So of course, this answer can have multiple different variations. That's okay, that's no problem. That comes back to the domain knowledge. You can actually design a question answer pair however you want. It can be scraped from a textbook. It could be mathematical competition. It could be question answer that's from the practice exam that you're doing for your midterms. You get the idea. As long as it's somewhat human sensible, they're both sentences, this format should be able to work. And you can send this into tokenizer, convert into numbers, and then send that numbers into the model. So that's what we're gonna do here today. Now that we have this data frame, we're gonna take a look. So let me make a cut from this code here. Let me run it. As you can see, boom, here's a panda data frame. You have two columns. The first column is question, second column is answer, and they're in a pair, meaning that the question and answer makes sense in each sample. So that's the raw data. Next step is to turn it into numbers, right? Because the words cannot go into models, but numbers can go into the models. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna initialize a tokenizer. And this tokenizer is coming directly from transformers package. Uh, you can coin a number of words, right? This is the number of unique words. And for simplicity, we're assuming 10,000. 10,000, you can think about it as a corpus coming directly from Oxford Dictionary. And then they're in certain alphabetical order. Letter A will go into the beginning, letter Z will go into the end. So once we have a tokenizer initialized, we then of course want to send a question answer into the tokenizer. And as you can see here, we convert it into sequences. Uh, so from here, it will already convert the words into numbers. And then you also want to pad it. Uh, the reason we want to pad it is because notice that this question answer, it's not that long, right? If it's not that long, obviously we can do this by coining a max length. Because if we do not do this, you're gonna have a bunch of zeros and then you're gonna run into sparsity problem. So of course you can argue that this is a training parameter and that's correct. It is a training parameter. And as a matter of fact, it's a hyperparameter uh, for you to change during your training process. In the end, put them together in one sample data and then you are ready. So let's run this code. We're gonna see how that look like. As you can see here, it's nothing fancy, but a couple of numbers. And since we pad it with a max length to be 10, uh, that's why here uh, pretty much stops at 10. And then if you don't like uh, these zeros behind, uh, you can change the max length to nine, eight, seven, you get the idea. Also, once you have a tokenizer ready, you essentially converted a bunch of question answer pair into the numbers. So once that's done, you can then go ahead and train your model. So before I do that, 
I want to be able to show you I can get it back, right? So this number here, I want to be able to show you I can get that back into actual words. Also, we have packages in here, helper functions design in the inference directory to help you do just that. So you have the sequence to text function here. So once you run that code, you can see, hey, you're able to take a bunch of tokens and turn that into words. Here we have one, two, three, four, four brackets, right? So these brackets of numbers, what do they mean? They can convert back to text. What is the capital of France? How many continents are there? What is the largest mammal? Who will the play Hamlet? Things like that. And you can send the answer token in there and you'll get back the answers. So this way you're able to go from text to tokens, tokens back to text as you desire. Once you know that's possible, last thing but not least is you're actually gonna train the model. So I have a stop dial code here for you to train it. All you gotta do is put the code there and then you can train your own model just like before. So let's run that. You can see here, I'm trying to run a hungry epoch. So that means I'm updating my model a hundred times. And then once that's done, you can enter a question and then it will predict the text for you by not only make a prediction from the model, but also to convert the token back into words. And you can see here that the response says, what is the question mark memo? So it's not doing as good of a job just yet because I only have a hundred iterations. So this model is trained, but it's not ready yet. Next part, we're gonna come back. We're gonna see how to fine tune in a way to get the model ready to produce some human sensible answers. Thank you for watching, subscribe and like.